the stupidest idea ever. Like, that, that's gonna hold 700 people and five people are gonna show up and it's gonna be the most awkward show ever. And so, uh, we listened to advice and we, uh, we didn't take it because we're in college and we were dumb. And so we booked a show by ourselves at the 40 Watt with our manager that was still in college at the time. And, um, we, we, we get there and we're like freaked out, you know, we did like a promo video, we're like, we're a real band, you know, we're not just college band, you know? And, um, we get there, there's a line of about 200, 300 people outside the door, and the show sold out before the night was over, and it was the moment for me where I literally like called my mom after, and I said, I actually think we might like do this thing. music scene is very different than what it is today. There was just a lot less of it. I mean, there was great music and there were people that were really into it, but the number of people that were the fans, the number of places to play, the number of bands there were, and the awareness of the town of the music scene was very different than what it is today. There were no apartments downtown. There was no Athfest. There were, uh, was, um, no, there were very few bars downtown. There were a couple of places for people to play music and um, a couple of bar bars and the hotels had bars and that's about it. There really wasn't much. Downtown Athens on a Friday night was a pretty quiet place except on a game weekend. And um, so the music scene was very much an underground scene. When I first got into it, I would imagine there was about 15 or 20 local original bands, and there was the little bitty 40 watt club. So the scene was different. It was very much driven by the original art, art school group of bands and people influenced by that. And it was a true underground scene that not that many people knew about it. Hell, more people in New York probably knew about what was going on in Athens than the people in Athens. My personal experience of that original band scene here of like the Pylon REM era, now I will say the B-52s were gone by the time I got here. That really didn't last in Athens very long. I mean, they took off so quickly. They were here for a little bit. I mean, they lived here, grew up here, but you know, they were off and gone to New York probably two years before I came to go to college. But when I arrived, REM had a single out and were in the process of making, I guess over the course of that first year that I was here, they were making their EP. Um, Pylon had a record out already, but the impact of that on me uh, changed my life. I mean, I saw REM play at a club here with a few hundred people, and I felt like I was seeing the Who in the 60s. It was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever seen in my life. And up until that point, I understood the playing of music, like in the garage, me and my friends, like basement rock, playing keg parties and things. And I understood how I could go see a touring hit rock band in a basketball arena or the Fox Theater. But I really did not understand how you got from one to the other. Like I knew the Beatles went to Germany, but I didn't really know 
what it was that was in between. So the first time I encountered like rock club culture with a few hundred people going nuts over a band, I mean, I thought it was like the greatest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And that is probably the thing that flipped the switch in me that to realize I am not gonna be a baseball announcer. I'm getting into this. This is just way more me. I know very few but professional musicians that are like don't have other jobs or other means of making money. Most people I know have some sort of job to supplement their income. Um, and I know some people who are very successfully working, you know, three days a week, two or three days a week at a job and then playing four shows a week or touring on the weekends or um, recording and then selling albums. Uh, one example of that would be Cicada Rhythm. It's my friends Andrea and Dave, and they've been playing music for a long time. Um, and I've watched them go from working full time and playing when they can to now cutting back another day at work and playing more shows and, you know, cutting, taking whole weeks off and going to South By. And, like, you know, they just went to Kindercore and got their vinyl pressed. And it's, it's cool to see that happening and to see them transition into the hopefully only music as your job because that's the dream. The sound of bands in Athens, the impact of R.E.M. is pretty interesting because um, on the one hand, this is like a creative scene, and so the last thing you wanted to do was to be like somebody else. make what you feel. Never try to uh, make music for the climate, you know what I'm saying? Or like adjusting your sound to like what people like, you know what I'm saying? Always do what you feel, what you hear, and what you believe, because that's when your music is always gonna be the best, you know? Like, and that's the, that's the best advice anyone can get, you know what I'm saying? And writer's block, you know, you can't let that get to you. You can't like focus too much on what you're trying to like, what you think you need to say, you just need to say exactly what you're hearing in your head. You know that voice, that that one voice you always hear, and like tell me, keep going, listen to that shit, because it's gonna tell you how to move. <laughs> I had heard about the scene before. I mean, my dad listened to R.E.M. and my mom likes the B-52s. So I'd heard about like all the classic bands. The, um, the historic scene kind of definitely informed me too. Just like, cause I, I, I don't like worship the guitar playing from, from Athens then, but like I, was really heavily influenced by like um, the guitarist for REM and the guy from The Smiths actually for like my first album. Most of the things that really broke out here were all very unique from one another, but that's not to say that there weren't a lot of bands that, especially people that moved here, that wanted to have like a jangly guitar sound like the early R.E.M. stuff. Jangly guitars and a dancey beat.
generations of musicians who grew up playing music here and they don't necessarily want to leave because they love it and they stick around. Maybe they tour nationally and then they take a break, but they still live in Athens or they come back and play. And then you have all these new young people who are also creating their own sound, but the old sound doesn't die. So the people who are still writing are influenced by the older bands because they're still active. So it's just this huge, just like melting pot. It just keeps happening. Yeah, right. Yeah, you don't erase one layer when you build another. They just kind of like stack up. I actually think there's like a net gain kind of in like overall volume of music coming out of Athens now. Especially now since there's like more increased visibility for the hip hop scene. Because when I was in school, like you never heard anything about like hip hop shows at like the 40 watt. I saw Killer Mike once, but that was like a Red Bull thing. They like rented out the 40 watt for it. But not saying that like the 40 watt never has hip hop shows. It's just like when I was in school, it was much harder for me to find out about them because there was much less like online visibility for them. I don't know how long that volumes hip hop blog has been around, but like I just didn't know about it when I was in school. It took me till afterwards when I was um, working for a music blog, uh, another one doing like research on the Athens hip hop scene. It's like, this is really like underserved right now. Um, but that's changing, especially since Lingua Franca has been blowing up. Um, I actually talked to her recently and um, I was going to actually reach out to her for another interview, but she's like trying to, she's trying to let the rest of the Athens hip hop scene like get a voice, like have their voices be heard too, which I think is really cool. It's definitely finna be like, you know what I'm saying, known that Athens has a heavy hip hop scene. It's a lot of acts here like Wild D, The Yard, um, who else? Uh, DK, Celine Hayes, King Blanco, um, Motorhead. Uh, man, it's so many. Sean Caruthers, he's one of like UGA uh, students. Um, Ster Sterling, Sterkurt, I don't know if y'all heard of him or not. But it's just so many people out here that's really making music. And I don't know, man, I feel like all I can see is it's just growing. It's something that we've been lacking in Athens is the hip hop scene. There's not a shortage of artists, there's just a shortage of venue spaces for that to happen. There weren't shows that were put together or showcases or, you know, she's getting that organized and that's revitalizing that scene. And she's also involved in local politics. Um, so she's able to kind of bridge the gap between music and culture and like how society is uh, including or excluding certain people and addressing that through music and her, the lyrics of her songs kind of address these bigger political issues through her personal experiences. Um, so I'm really enjoying watching her do her thing. Yeah. I think that it's actually like really possible for it to all come together. Um, Cause there are definitely still ways that like the indie rock scene and the hip hop scene can collaborate that like we just haven't thought of yet, probably. Like there's gonna be like some, some weird person that some weird person that just really knows how to record music that makes like these super weird beats or something like that maybe they'll find a way to like incorporate like the weirdness of the olivia tremor controls like ami and stuff with like hip-hop and make something new i don't know University, like versus the townies kind of is a really big creative point for people. There probably always has been a little bit of a divide between the college community and the downtown community, which is funny because such a huge percentage of the people in the local music scene that are not college students came to Athens to go to college. It is. I mean, I came here to go to school and um, after two years of that, I kind of realized that it was almost like two different cities. You know, I was living on campus for two years. I was a resident assistant my second year. So I was on campus all the time. And I was like, you know, this is cool, but I think there's like, there's this other thing called Athens and it's over there. And I want to check that out. Like, I want to see what's going on. So like my third year, I, 
I got a job at The Grit and kind of moved off campus and started doing that. And like I was taking fewer hours and kind of started just to like meet people through that job. Um, and it was really music because everyone who worked there was in a band. And then I was really into music, but I was still at the university and was like, okay, I've heard all these bands. Like I see their CDs like locally in the radio station when I'm DJing or whatever. And now I get to go see them and they're really great. And now I'm meeting them and it's like, cool. Yeah, a lot of people that live in Athens work at UGA, but a lot of times, like, you had, I had to, like, research shows and stuff like that. Like, I was, I had to, like, read the flagpole, because that's, like, the, the weekly, the townie weekly, you know? I was reading the flagpole, seeing, like, oh, hey, um, like, like, my sophomore year, like, I looked at the flagpole and I saw that the music tapes were playing a big show at the 40 Watt, and I had heard about them online, and I was like, whoa, that's cool, but it's not, like... UGA itself like helped me find out that I it was like all just like outside information however it's a great vantage point to get to know like the city I mean you're right there when you're a freshman you can just walk downtown yeah and um when I came out here I didn't even know about the hip-hop scene it's it's weird like you know especially the fact that I love like music and this was what I wanted to do I came out here so that I can like you know work on music because I heard y'all had a studio at uh where is that? Damn, at the MOC, y'all have a studio there. And I was using it for a while, but then they stopped like letting people come through there, not students, because people were like taking equipment. So um, yeah, like I had no clue on the history of Athens. And you know, like it's kind of bad. When you go places, you should definitely like study up on it, you know, so you can like understand like what's going on. And just like, you know, be able to connect with the locals, you know, the people that have been here for a while, because I mean, as you can see, I see certain neighborhoods again torn down and they building like, you know, homes for like, you know, the students, which I understand, but uh, at the same time, it's like, damn, I wonder how the locals feel about that. You know, seeing certain, seeing certain places that they were going to when they were kids being like changed or moved away. I think there can be more attention paid to continuing to support and foster local businesses and local growth and preserving the communities as they are now. Um, I think that we can all you know, work together and I think that if we all value Athens as a place, the university being here is important. I mean, Athens wouldn't really be anything you know, without that. So it owes a lot to it, and I think the university also owes a lot to Athens, and that a kind of cooperation and preserving the town that the university has built itself on uh, would be a really great move. Um, there's just a lot of really old houses, I mean hundreds of year old houses, that uh, are getting torn down, and no one really talks about it, they're just gone. And then, you know, the next group of students who come through won't know that there was like a you know 150 year old house that was like on this plot, but it was torn down and now maybe there's a business or like a apartments or something, but you can't just like let that kind of thing fade away. I think that's the hardest part for me is seeing the impact the university has on the town, and it's not always acknowledged. And there could be so much done, be like done to join forces to like preserve the cultural integrity and historical uh, areas of Athens through the university because university, they have historic, historic preservation and they've got you know, all these programs that could be teaming up with the government or the town itself. You've got um, people who view that they're doing something that's uh, authentic and they're struggling to make a living and they're living as a starving artist and you've got college kids whose parents are paying for everything. This is just their impression, not my view of like this is reality or not. 
it is a, a disconnect and I feel like we need to bring that together so that you know everybody can like benefit from what's going on. There's been a lot of good reasons for me to leave Athens, for me to go to Los Angeles or New York and pursue my career in those places. There's a lot of opportunity, there's a lot of business that I do in those places already. But I love living in Athens. I love the town, I love the people, I love the creative vibe. And um, I think what I stumbled into when I was 17 was unexpectedly great. One thing that always connects us, music, it always makes, you know what I'm saying, it, it plays on emotions, you know what I'm saying, it can bring people together or it can separate. Um, I think music really does bridge the gap, like if you just go to the shows, if you listen to local bands and you like them and you check them out and you talk to them, then like, there you go, you've created like a, um, a bridge. Thank you.